All right, everyone, it is seven o'clock. Welcome, welcome. This is the first of our short take series. Uh, short takes are useful little bits of technology and other materials that can make your lives as chapter leaders easier. Uh, today, we're going to go over Google Forms, some brief housekeeping to begin with. Uh, yes, this is being recorded. Yes, it will be emailed out afterwards. And I am asking that we hold um, all questions until the end because we are going to try to keep this to 30 minutes or less. Um, if you need any additional help with forms, want me to support you in creating through a form, you can always contact me. Uh, my, uh, my extension is 4321, and the number to dial that directly is 212-870-2311, or you can always email me at pross at agohq.org. All right, so let's get started with our Google Forms. So first off, what is Google Forms? Google Forms is a service by Google that lets you create a form to manage taking in information and then uh, it will allow you to export it to a spreadsheet so you can organize and use, use it afterwards. What do you need to, to use Google Forms? You need a Google account. So if you've already got a Gmail account, you've already got access to Google Forms. If you need a Gmail account, all you need to do is go to, and I'm gonna start sharing my screen here so we can uh, see the pages and we'll go screen two. You're going to go to google.com backslash forms and then sign up and it'll guide you through the process. All right, and that is all we need this page for. But otherwise, most of you probably have a Gmail account. And one of the things you can do once you're logged into your email, you see this little grid of little dots here. Here's where all the other Google services live. You'll see forms is right on top. Click on it. It takes you right to this page to make your very first form. And there we go, it is that simple. We now have a form set up. Uh, one of the things you'll note that you can make the file name of the form different than the title of the form. That'll be one of the very first spots we start. So we're gonna call the, we're gonna say this is our draft and we'll put the title in here, but we don't want this to say draft so we can just take that right out. There we go. And now we have the title of our form. One of the very good things to do when you're creating a form is to create contact if for um, if anyone needs help with the form, so and put contact. If you have problems, have any issues, contact pross at agohq.org. And that information is now always going to be displayed at the top of your form. Now we're going to talk about the questions that we can add and the different types of questions that Google accommodates. To do this, I'm going to uh, Pull that down and we're gonna go into, um, ooh, where do we go? Oh, I lost my file. All right, let me go pull that back up. What I'm doing here is I'm going through my Google Drive account to show to, um, whoops, iDrive. Um, and this is another way to um, get to your files that you have on, on Google. Um, this is called Google Drive where all the files live. Here's my folder that's for today's webinar. You'll see I have two sample forms put together already. We're gonna take a look at our sample questions form here. All right, now this is the edit view. We've got our title here with our separate questions, meeting preferences, our meeting preferences form. Very first type of, uh, very first thing to do, add, add a new question. Now, Google, Google Forms are pretty smart. It's going to try to intuit what you want. So if we made a name form, it's going to automatically default to short answer. If that's wrong, you can always change it to whatever other type of question you want. If you made too many questions, see we already have a name one here. You wanna delete one, you're just gonna click the little trash can and it's gone. Now we're back down to one. If you need more than one type of, of the question, you can copy it and it'll just make copies of the same exact thing over and over. You have some choices in, in this box here. You can always add a photo to, the, to um, your questions. If you have a reason to have photos in there, that is an option for you. I've never found much of a use for that, but it's a neat thing that does exist. And if you wanna make this a required question, one that you can't just pass through and ignore, you're gonna click the little button here. And then that question will be required of everyone filling out the form. Okay, and this is your short answer field. This is for short answer text, but for quick little things like names, like that. Next type of question we have here is the paragraph. That is for longer, um, more, if you want multiple paragraphs, I believe it maxes out somewhere around 600 characters. So you can get a couple 
couple paragraphs in here before uh, Google says no more. But this is for longer answer blank text, free text um, responses. Next type of question that we have are a multiple choice question. You type your question in the top here, and then you have uh, you get different slots for each of the answers. Now, if I wanted to add more options, I just click the add option, then I have an option for, we can say vegetarian. And uh, there's also this really neat option to add other. Oh, let's, let's show you adding other. So here where it says add option, that'll be, uh, they'll just add another selection just like this. This add other will be an other box where you can type in the answer. You're probably familiar with that option from forms you've taken. All right, that's a nice, simple, multiple choice question. The next type of question we're going to cover are checkbox questions. Now this is for when you want people to be able to answer with multiple answers. So here with the checkbox question, you can say you're available for every time or no time. And again, you have that, you know, you can keep adding options or you add others. And the way to tell these apart, the multiple choice are circles, the checkboxes are checks, uh, are boxes. There you go. Uh, the next type of uh, question you can ask are for file uploads. Now I would say this is a use with caution feature. Sometimes it can be a little finicky to get it to work properly. But if you ever do want to collect file types like PDFs or maybe music, you can use a Google form to do that. Um, you can uh, have it allow only specific file types and pick the file type that you allow. You can max choose the number of files that you can upload to the form, as well as changing the size for the form. Uh, now, once you select a file upload uh, option, what it's going to do is in that very same folder where we saw that the form is located, it makes this other folder where the file responses would go. So when I went to go, if I were to go check the results of this form and I wanted to go see what files people upload, I'd need to go to this spot, this folder here to see, to see the files. All right, there we go. We're back over to the sample questions here. Next type of question. This is another one I have not found too, too much of a use for, but maybe your purposes, you'll, you'll come across a use for it, um, but it's a linear scale question. You can pick, you know, start at, start at one or zero and go to through 10. I do recommend always putting what is the worst and what is the best, because even if it is intuitive to you, not everybody will know. So I do recommend putting those um, notes in there. Should you use a linear scale field for your firm? All right, next, next question. We're flying through here. What... Uh, this option is a multiple choice grid question. And you see when I clicked on it, it brought me to the to the edit. It like changed what it looked like. This is showing what are the options for the rows on this multiple choice. And here are the columns. And if you click back off, you can see this is what it will display as in your form. So you can select one item on each row. Next, next option is a checkbox grid similar to the uh, multiple select, um, <clears throat> the multiple choice grid here, but it does allow you to pick more than one option. So that is useful for, you know, if you need to pick multiple options for multiple items in one question. The very, uh, oh, no, second to last is a date field. What you can put in this is only dates, only dates in the format that are given and you can't pick anything else. So, you know, I haven't found this to, to be too, too useful. I usually want um, to have multiple responses, but if you need a, one specific date, you can use this, uh, this type of question to receive just date responses and very similar things with the time fields. These are all options here. The time will, you can only enter in a specific time into the box here. So that is your basic question set up. You'll see uh, I was adding new questions with a little plus, um, plus in the circle here. There are other um, items here. If you have other forms, if you want, need to make multiple copies of forms, you can use this import questions um, field. So it'll allow you to transfer questions from one form to another. 
Uh, this is a add title and description. These two T's here that if you're breaking up your form into multiple sections, you can have um, multiple headers like this throughout the form. And then you can add images throughout the form, video throughout the form. And our very last option is to add sections that breaks up into pages, unless you're building something really, really long, which I don't recommend, you don't really need sections. All right, so that is setting up the questions themselves. The next thing we need to look at when we are setting up a form are the settings for the form. Now, this is particularly important for those of you who are using a, a Google account that's connected to maybe your workplace or a school, because when you're using a Google account that is part of a larger group, you end up with this line here that allows you to restrict the, the form responses to only people in this organization. So right now, since I'm in my AGO work account, making a form on my AGO, um, like uh, Google Drive account, it's asking me, do I want to restrict responses to this in this form to only people who also have AGO accounts? So I want to make sure that that's off if this is a form I'm going to send to a lot of people. Really big thing to uh, to make sure you remember to do in your settings section if you are someone who is using a um, a Google Drive a Google account that's part of a larger larger group. Um, if you are not part of a larger group and this is just your personal Google account that you're using, you won't even have this question here. No need to worry about it. Um, other things that are useful to know about in this settings um, section are the collect email addresses. This um, allows Google to do the collecting of email addresses for you by making people sign into their Google account before touching their form. I normally keep this turned off because sometimes people do have trouble with it, and I prefer to collect email addresses through one of those short response forms, uh, short response questions. Okay, so other things that might be useful to you on this page are is in the um, the presentation section. Now, a, a good thing to do is to have a confirmation message that uh, lets people know that you did receive the form. And the way that the default setting is your response has been recorded. That's a little dry. Maybe you want to say, thank you, your response has been recorded. So all you'll do is you'll update the um, text in the box, make your changes and hit save. And now the confirmation message that pops up when people fill out the form has changed. Um, it is the default for Google to allow you to submit multiple responses to a form. This is usually a perfectly fine thing to leave on. Never really had an issue with it. And what I do find um, has happened when I've limited responses when I've used forms is I have people who are like, oh, I made a mistake. I want to submit another response. And then you have to you know, get them back into the form. So it's usually just easier to let people submit multiple responses. Um, you can check other uh, default settings on this page as well. And another thing that might be useful. All right, so we've already said, no, we don't really want to use the default email address collecting. But under the question defaults, um, you can make all questions required by default. So if you know you want everyone who fills out your form to fill out absolutely every question on it, you can just set this up, turn this to on, and then all the questions will become required. We'll leave that off for now. All right, so we have our settings set. We have our question set. Um, now let's make our form look a little bit better. We're gonna take a look up here at the little palette up top. Looks like a little painter's palette. And this will let you, maybe purple is not your thing and you prefer green forms. There you go, the colors changed. Um, you can also change the fonts here. You can enlarge the text. Um, although they don't give you very many options, you can do that and you can add an image to the header if you'd like to be fancy. But that's that, that is a, um, okay. oh, great. So um, before we send our form out, we're going to want to take a look at what does this look like to the user? Now, how do we do that? That comes up here with this eye. It'll, you'll see it says preview that pops up and click preview. And this is what our form will look like to um, people filling it out. You can see here is our required name field. The rest of them are not. You can take a look. Here's our single multiple choice select. Here's our check boxes. Here's the upload. 
this is how that linear scale chart works out and looks in, uh, on the user side. We've got the uh, multiple select multiple choice as well as the multiple select checkboxes. Here's our date and time fields again. So that is that is how you take a look and proofread your form. Let's get back to get back to the editing view. We're going to go back to this little pencil here. And that takes us right on back to the editor. Now, form's not very good until you send it to anybody. So we uh, we need to get our share links. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of when dealing with Google Forms is there are two types of links involved. This is the edit page. This link up here is what gets you to the edit page. This is not the link you want to send out because you want people to get responses to your form, not to be able to change the form. So where do you uh, where do you get the one you send out? It's the send button here. I'm going to click that, and it'll pop up a little box here. This will allow you to email the form directly from this box. Um, you just set up who you want these emails to go to. The subject will always be the title of your form. The message defaults to, I've invited you to fill out a form, and then it includes a link to the form. That's if you just want to email directly out of Google Forms. If you want to put this link in your own email or onto your website, you're going to go over the little link, little link picture here. And you have a link here that you can copy and paste wherever you'd like. We also have an option to shoot and shorten the URL so you can get a little bit nicer looking link. This last option um, is an embed option. It's if you're building a website. If you use a file upload question, it doesn't work. But otherwise, you would just get just like the link here, you would get something you can copy and embed into your website. Um, you also have options to go share direct to Facebook and Twitter from these buttons. Um, they will just have you connect your Facebook and Twitter accounts to your Google account. So we have, let's say we've gotten our form, we've copied our link, we've sent it out to who we want to send it to. What does it look like to get responses to a form? So I, um, I put together another form that we're gonna take a look at that I submitted some responses to. So this is our sample form with responses. And as you can see over on our responses tab right here, we have six responses to this form. Now this is a short little form for a meeting survey with name, time preference, and what kind of pizza would you like? So let's see the kind of responses we get. The very first view you get when you click over to responses is the summary view that gives you everything all together. Here's all of your name responses. Here are the six names that filled out this form. It gives you a copyable chart with responses to the time question. And what I can say about these little copy buttons here, if you copy and paste this directly into an email, these numbers are gonna be super tiny and very unpleasant to see. So I would suggest if you're gonna copy these charts, put them into a, a Word document, blow them up bigger so it's a little bit more comfortable to look at. Same with our, what type of pizza would you look like? It does the break, uh, what type of pizza would you like? This is our breakdown here. When you hover over it, it'll show you what the um, what the color is, how many responses, and the percentage breakdown. And this again is the summary uh, summary response page. And maybe if you're doing a short little form like this, this is all you need. You don't you know all you need to know is what time to set your meeting for and what to eat. So um, you don't need anything that more complicated than that. However, let's say you you are doing more complex forms. You want to take a look at how people answered individual questions. You're going to click on the question section here. And then you can switch between the, the different questions and it will give you all the responses for that question. So as you can see here, here are the six names that were submitted responses. Each person, it um, will do a little work for you and it'll show you how to get three responses for eight, two responses for nine, one for seven. And then we can switch over to the kind of pizza you like and it's similar, similar there. Our third option for responses are the individual responses. And it will show you how each person filled out the form. And now I, I do think it is, um, there's a couple of useful things when you look at the individual responses. Um, you can print individual responses if you need them anywhere. And then let's say you do have a situation where someone messed up their first attempt at the form, so they wanted to do two, and you see that they've submitted multiple responses, you can delete the responses you don't want. 
with their little trash can button right here. Now, the other thing that Google Forms does that is really, really powerful is it can take any responses from your form and stick it into a spreadsheet. So you can display that spreadsheet places or use that data in another way. Now, to do that, all you're going to do is click Link to Sheets. And since I want to start a new spreadsheet, I'm going to keep it selected on Create New Spreadsheet. And then it's um, going to default the name of the spreadsheet will be the same as the name of your form to make it easier for, easy for you to find. So we're gonna hit create. Now that'll pop up and you see it has made me a spreadsheet with all the nice information that was entered into that form in spreadsheet format. It also tells me at what time the responses came in. Now this can be really handy because these spreadsheets, you can share them and you can copy a link and put that link wherever you'd like to show people responses, uh, manage a substitute list, anything like that. So you've got, you've got that option here with the spreadsheet for sharing responses. Great, so we have, we have covered quite a good bit of ground here. Um, with that, we've got about 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and stop to see if anybody has any questions about using Google Forms. Anybody, anybody? How do you find file sizes affect upload? Okay, file sizes, yes. Um, the bigger it is, the harder it is to get it to upload. That's the, the short and long version of it. The bigger the file is, the more likely you are to have a problem with it. Um, I can say I have used file upload, um, the file upload option pretty much ever since Google has made it an option and I have never had a 100% smooth sailing experience with it. And that is, you know, I. I started using it in college with other college students who I would assume would be tech savvy enough to upload that material properly. So I will say it's something that can be a little bit finicky, um, especially as you go up in file sizes. All right, any other Q&A uh, hanging out? Any other questions? Um, and just so you all know, if you want some help with your forms, you can always reach out to me at pross at agohq.org or give me a call, extension 4321, and we can go through any of your questions about forms. I'll be at the uh, Northeast slash Mid-Atlantic Convention the week of July 4th, but otherwise should it be pretty, pretty well available to everyone. I see we've got a couple more questions coming in. How's the membership data transfer going? Swell, it's great, it's super fun, and we're doing uh, we're doing everything we can to get that go live day to, to happen in September. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, how would I use this to manage a substitute list? Great, so I would build a form with all the questions that I would want for my substitute list, and then have all those questions go into a spreadsheet, and then you share the link to the spreadsheet and you use that spreadsheet as your substitute list. People will automatically update as they fill out information on the form. Um, for the person who's managing the substitute list, all you need to do at that point is just go in and check, make sure people's memberships are current, make sure there's no junk getting in there, um, and any sort of maintenance or editing that you would uh, might need to do. Great. Great. Any, anything else? We are at 7.23. We've got eight minutes. Um, I suggest chapters don't use your, yep, you can use G Suite with nonprofits. That is very, very smart to um, use G Suite for nonprofits. So the Google account is owned by the chapters. Um, and it is, oh, great, no cost. That is, that is excellent. Thank you for that suggestion, Den Collins. All right, if we have no more questions rolling in, I will give everybody six minutes of their day back. Thanks so much for uh, coming to our first short take. I hope this was useful. If you have any other topics you'd like to cover, just send me an email, make a request. Uh, the next one up is very likely going to be on Excel and basic Excel skills to make things easier for you to access membership data. All right. Thanks so much for, uh, oh, and I also would love to thank Molly Davey for coming here and being my backup tonight. Thanks so much for being here, Molly. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope this was useful and informative and maybe a little fun. Who knows? It's a forum. Um, but I uh, hope you all have a great night. Thanks so much for all the work you do for your chapters in the AGO. Have a good one. Bye.